One of the first things we need to learn about when using the command line is directories and how we move around through them and see what files we have. So in the GUI, we were able to just click on a directory or a folder, as it were, and see what was in it. As I mentioned in the GUIs, we call them folders. Here, we will refer to them as directories. And that winds up being significant because the commands that we use will refer to it either with an initial or a shortened form of the term directory. So the first command that might be useful to you is to figure out what directory you're in. And this is done with PWD, print working directory. So I happen to be in the directory home, M. Lewis, Scala books, PPS, command line. Okay. And in fact, we could navigate to that here under the computer file system. We can go to home, M. Lewis, Scala books, PPS, command line. Okay. Here I get to see the, the four files. How would I see those file, four files over here? Well, that's what this ls command does. Earlier I typed it in and I gave it an option. And this was one of the things that I mentioned is a strength of the command line. The fact that I can specify options to things. So in the case of ls, the hyphen l option gives you a long listing. So instead of just getting the files individually, this gives you one full line for, per file and prints out a lot of additional information. We'll talk later about what all of this information means, but the file names are here at the end. There are also hidden files in Linux. Hidden files are files that start with a dot. If we put a hyphen A in there, if I, don't, if I leave off the L, the A is just going to show us these things in the, the short format. If I put A and L together, I get to see them here. These two directories are special. The dot directory is a name that's always used for your current directory. So while that is the long name, the full name for where I happen to be, dot is also a perfectly happy name for my current directory. And that name works everywhere. And dot dot is the name of the directory above you. So since I am in Lewis or home M. Lewis Scala Books PSS command line, the dot dot directory goes up one level and is the PPS. Okay. There are other options to the ls command, but these are the ones that you'll find that you probably use the, the most frequently. Okay. What about moving around between directories? So in the GUI, I just clicked on something uh, or double clicked it to open it. If I want to go up to the directory above where I am, I'm going to use the command cd. And if I pass in cd dot dot, that will take me to the parent directory of where I am. You can call cd without any arguments. And when you do that, it takes you back to your home directory, which for me is home m. Lewis. If I want to go back to that directory that I was in, I can go to Scala Books, PPS, Command Line. Now you might have just noticed something there. The ends of some of these things filled in really, really fast. I'm not that fast of a typer. It turns out the command line has something to prevent you from doing as much typing as you otherwise would, and that is tab completion. Tab completion is your friend. It is a wonderful thing. This is a message to my students. Remember to hit tab. Uh, it always frustrates me as I get to the end of the school year, or at least the end of the semester, and I have students who are still typing in the full names of things. And not only is tab completion faster, but you can't have a typo in the tab completion. And if I did, so let's say I had put an A instead of an O, when I hit tab, it doesn't expand. So I know that I've mistyped something. And as soon as I expand it out, I definitely get the right file that I wanted. So the CD command allows you to move around. The LS command allows you to see what files are in a directory. You can also use LS to see what files are in other directories. Okay, so you notice here that these paths start with a slash. Well, just the name slash is the root for everything. If you're on a Windows machine, this would be C colon. 
And so this is a listing of the things that are in the top level directory here. And you'll notice I got this ls can be followed by what you want to take or get a listing of. If I use the short listing, I get something like that. If I wanted to have a listing of the directory above me, I could do that. If I want it to be the long listing of that. Okay, so ls can take multiple, the, not only the arguments that tell it how to do things, but what you want to get the listing of. Another thing that we can do is use wildcards when specifying names of things. So what if I only wanted to see files that end in .txt? Well, the asterisk or star or some people pronounce it as a splat is a wildcard that matches anything. So this says list out using the long format anything .txt. And so I get the two files that have the .txt ending on them. It doesn't have to go at the beginning. I could have said m star, in which case I get all files that start with an m. And you can do other things. You can put the, the star at the beginning, at the end, or in the middle. Uh, it'll just match zero or more characters of whatever. If you want to match exactly one character, and I don't have files that make a good example of this inside of here, but you can use a question mark for that. So that would have actually matched anything that was TX followed by whatever character. So TXA, TXB, TXC, anything with those extensions would have been matched by this. So that gives you some idea of how we can move around in our directory structure, how we can see where we are in our directory structure, and how we can look at files.